I'm Glenn Smith. I've been around for a few years. You can see by my white hair and all the good stuff. So if I say Apple, what comes to your mind? Mac. Okay, why? Why not this? Because I'm staring at Mac. All right, my point is simply this. Sometimes we enter into the equation with preconceived ideas. You hear something and you think something. And so what we want to do is we want to, to when you hear the word Bezlio, we want you to think, oh, yes, and go right to it. So uh, in this situation here, uh, I want to welcome you to the Bezlio uh, uh, Mainspring Conference and uh, give you an idea of what we're looking at when we talk about shop floor. Again, my name is Glenn Smith. I've been in the, uh, a visual consultant for uh, 20 plus years, and I've been in the manufacturing world for 40 plus years, so I've been around for uh, forever. Shop floor, what does that really mean? Well, there's some areas that we look at when we talk about shop floor. Uh, now, we, certainly, uh, shop floor would be not in the financial world, although data that the accounting or financial world uses comes from the shop floor. But areas that we've looked at and we've uh, done some uh, bezel uh, development in uh, for customers, quoting would be one. How many of you work in the estimating world? All right. Customer order or sales order. Obviously, uh, in the manufacturing world, you got it, uh, you're got you looking at a customer order. Labor transactions. I want to talk about data and the validity of data uh, and, and how uh, uh, the accuracy of, uh, for costing purposes. Inventory transactions is a, is a common area where we uh, uh, work or look at as it relates to uh, uh, data. Uh, uh, inventory adjustments, uh, issues, receipts, traced inventory, piece tracked inventory, things like that. Receiving inbound uh, material. Uh, anybody uh, have ex experience in the receiving world? Uh, uh, purchase receipts, etc. Um, all right, when something comes in, uh, even today, not everything is barcoded. And so, how do I get that data from? that, I mean, it's one thing to put it on the shelf, but it's another thing to get that data into the ERP software and, uh, and make it available for, uh, for uh, timely uh, uh, consumption, et cetera. Shipping, the inverse of the receipt would be the outbound. You got the inbound and the outbound. How do I get that in a timely manner? And I've worked with, uh, uh, as Brian said, hundreds of customers literally uh, hundreds of customers where we've looked at how you do something and who does it, when do they do it, things like that. Shipping is a key area. Project management. Uh, you can go out and buy software that does great project management, but there's also a cost for that and uh, there are ways to leverage your existing ERP software uh, to do project management and uh, do it quite nicely. So let's talk about some of these in detail. And at the end of the session, not only will we have uh, time for questions, but also uh, I want to do a little demonstration of uh, some of the bezels. Labor transactions. Purpose, generate production labor transactions so that we can do what with it? We just talked in the last sessions. We have data. What's the relevancy? What's the accuracy of that data? If somebody runs a labor report, is it trustworthy? Is it broken down properly and set up, run versus indirect? So some of the transactions we would capture would be, or typical would be indirect, set up, and run. And feel free to ask questions as we go along here. Uh, well, let's go back here one time here. All right, inventory. Generate inventory transactions. Adjustments. Probably one of the biggest um, issues that, uh, especially manufacturing uh, companies have, is the maintenance or, or the accuracy of inventory. What do I have? Where do I have? How much do I have? Is it, uh, is it already spoken for? You know, the, you've heard the uh, 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 verbiage uh, robbing Peter to pay Paul. You know, can I steal from this because of, you know, timeliness or whatever. So we're looking at adjustments, adjust in, adjust out, 
issues, and then receipts. That's an area that uh, we've uh, done uh, bezels, we've created bezels in. Most recently, uh, I've got a, uh, um, a shipping bezel here. Uh, the purpose of a shipping bezel would be to ship customer orders. As customer orders are created and product is available for shipment, these bezels will facilitate the transfer of material to the shipping location, i.e. dock, build the various documents, and provide confirmation of the shipments. Again, we have, and, and I go back to long before ERPs, and so you had data that came into the uh, uh, receiving dock, and you had data that went out, and it was typically in the paper form, and it got passed up to accounting, they, you know, you know, and, and whatever. And so now we're looking at integrated <laughs> software where it's that quick. You don't have to wait. It's been shipped, I can invoice for it. All right, let's, talk, let's break this down a little bit and how I, uh, and working with the customer, and I guess what I probably should do is give you uh, a, a, a scenario of, of this. Customer said, um, we want to automate the shipping process. And here's how we think it should be done. And you'll hear me talk about this. I'm going to do a sales engineering uh, discussion tomorrow. And uh, so they said, here, we think this is how it should be done. So we sat down and said, okay. And this was all remote. Uh, they're not next door. Uh, so uh, we sat down, had a discovery call, and uh, said, okay, what is it that you want to do? They laid out what they want to do, and uh, out of that we said, okay, uh, we think that there's a better way, slightly different, and so uh, we came up with this. So there's three bezels involved here. Bezel number one would be picking. So pick and move items from the warehouse to the dock. How many of you are in the manufacturing world? All right, so how many of you are familiar with the process of shipping? All right, good. So. In this case here, the customer said, uh, we want to take and, and sh go out to the warehouse, pick an item, and we want to be able to generate a pack list. So there's a number of things that go on there if, if you understand the process. First of all, I have to know what the item is, what do I need, where is it located, how many do I need, uh, anybody familiar with serialization or what we call traceability? I gotta know what the trace, uh, if I'm working in that environment, what uh, the serialization is. And I wanna go ahead and take that out of the warehouse, move it over here to the dock, note that in the system so I don't lose visibility, and also prevent it be, from being picked for something else. You know, two customers, same item. If I've pulled it for this customer here, I, it's not, no longer available for this other customer, so I have to make it as unavailable, if you will. So we dealt with the process of moving it to uh, the dock. We had to deal with serialized and non-serialized items. Uh, not only was it a staging at the dock physically, but also doing a inventory move within the software. Uh, and then we needed to create the appropriate transactions in the database. So that was the picking bezel. Then we went to the shipment, what we call the builder bezel. Uh, before we go there, let me show you uh, what this looks like. Uh, this here would be what we call the web portal, and this would be a single screen. You've got your, your picking bezel up here, you've got your builder bezel here, and you've got your confirmation bezel here. That's just an illustration of all three of them being on the same screen. I don't need to put them on the same screen. I could break them apart and have them on individual screens. It may be that I'm working at, I could be working on a, in this case here, a laptop computer. I could be working on the similar situation where this is in the mobile for, uh, environment. Again, three individual bezels, three individual bezels on the, on the same panel. So this is what we call panels. Is that, is that working? All right. Middle button, you need a little pointer. Ah, thank little you, thank you. Edge. There you go. It's green and not red. I don't know. All right. So, just an illustration of, uh, from, a, from an implementation standpoint, how you can build those depending on whether or not you want to look at uh, the bezels individually or collectively. So let's talk about the, uh, the, the process here. Uh, if you look at 
picking items using a shipment list, there's got to be some document that tells me I need to ship this. Call it, I'm, I'm just calling it for illustration purposes a shipment list. It could be the pick list, it could be whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and use that as my guide. So when I do that, the first thing that I'm going to uh, uh, present to the user is tell me what your customer order is because I know if it's a customer order, I know a number of things. What the line out is, I know the quantity, I know the item, and so we start here with the sales order. The individual enters the sales order, moves to the next screen. We say, okay, and here this just happens to be a trace item here. We know the location, we know the quantity, we know the line item on the uh, customer order, and we know the part ID, and we know how many is needed there. Very simple, very clean, very uh, um, uh, 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 simplified, if you will. The user puts in a quantity, they click the pick button, we confirm that we've processed that, and we allow them to either end the pick or proceed to the next pick. Now, we know that you have to uh, anticipate issues when you're out there. Maybe they get out there, the part's not in there. Uh, or there's insufficient quantity, or any number of things that uh, we have to deal with. So we're always allowing them to either cancel or end the pick where they can come back in and, and uh, pick back up where they left off. Maybe they're done for the day, they didn't finish it, whatever. So regardless, we're down here to the end pick versus the proceed to the next part. And, and if, it's the, uh, if, if the order's complete, then we acknowledge that as well. All right, so we've picked it. It's sitting on the dock, both physically and in the, uh, in the database. It's been transferred to the dock location. Then we go to the builder. Purpose of the builder is to perform the shipment. So assuming that it's been packaged, boxed, created, whatever the item is, uh, we're gonna go lo locate the items in the dock. We're gonna select from the grid. And then after we're done, we're gonna use what's called the shipment confirmation bezel to confirm the shipment. Again, going back to my web portal, I'm talking about this uh, bezel here. If I'm in the uh, mobile environment, I'm looking at this. And again, you can call them whatever you want to call them when you, when you uh, create bezels. So the process here of, uh, of the builder is to select the items, again, using the shipment list, that pick list that I have. So I go ahead and enter the customer order for the shipment list. Similar format to what, I, what you saw on the last screen. Consistency, uh, is, is key uh, from the end user standpoint. All right, we know that we picked these items during the picking process for this customer order. So on here we tell it, here's line items, and again the part ID, and how many we did, and we're just merely allowing to pick one, many, or all of those, or I should say select, one, many, or all on that checkbox. This one here says select all or select individually. And from there, we're gonna compile or create that pack list. Everything that you ship or receive has a pack list, right? It's the contents of what's in the box. And so when, I, when we select that and we click build shipment, we're gonna go ahead and do a couple of things. Uh, depending on the output that you're looking for, uh, you can print, you can view the pack list, which then allows you to print the pack list. Uh, if there's any other uh, forms, commercial invoice or whatever. And oh, by the way, maybe I didn't ship all of them. Maybe they, I, I was missing an item or two or quantitatively. I could go back in and ship additional. Maybe they were located, found or whatever. When I'm done, here is the, we give them one last opportunity here because is it going via UPS, FedEx, DHL, common carrier, or whatever? And maybe I'm picking to pre, uh, I'm, I'm doing what we would call a pre-ship. I've picked all of these and I'm preparing for tomorrow's shipments. Well, the system says I'm using the current date, so maybe I need to update that date. So one of the things that we allow them to do here is go in by a pack list here, uh, if they, uh, and I, I probably should clarify this right here, this screen comes up 
if you've already performed a shipment. Uh, we give you this screen here because these are a, uh, uh, for that same customer order, these would be pack lists that have been shipped but not confirmed. And so we allow you to go back and, uh, and change the ship date uh, and update that particular one. All right, so the pack list will be created based on the items that were selected. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, oh, I'm, one more step here. An inventory transaction is created removing the items from inventory. So in other words, we've taken them out of the dock location and physically uh, uh, shipped them as well as created the inventory transaction noting that. All right, the confirmation side of these, and I'll explain in a minute why we broke these into three bezels. The confirmation side of these is we update the pack list info, uh, we complete the shipment in UPS, FedEx, and or common carrier, we note the tracking way bill number, and we enter slash update this information in the ERP. Again, looking ahead here, here's my web portal, here's my uh, mobile, confirmation, confirmation, so in this bezel here, we don't need the customer order. We know that these items are sitting out here in a unconfirmed status. So we're gonna let them go ahead and, and if I go to the next slide here, uh, we filter by pack list, customer order, and or customer. And we also then allow that to constrain the, what's displayed here if I'm looking at it by a pack list or customer order or whatever. And down here, I have the ability to then, it's in small print here, if you will, but I have the ability to enter a way bill ID as well as change the shipping date. And one of the other things that we did with this bezel is this is integrated with uh, uh, UPS FedEx DHL so that this is dynamic information. And so that information coming back, which is already populated as the process of going on a world ship or whatever, has already been uh, uh, sent back to, to the ERP software, uh, it may need to be edited, changed, or whatever. So uh, one of the things that we allow is the user to go ahead and modify that information for whatever reason. Maybe they went over to world ship, they had to delete that shipment and, uh, and whatever. And maybe the date was not correct. So uh, before they confirm, select that button and say confirm uh, or mark as shipped, uh, we allow them one last time by which to uh, update the database. The intent here is to then uh, allow the pack list status to be marked as complete, and that means that it can be invoiced. Accounting can take it and uh, invoice that. But up to that point, it was uh, marked as uh, not complete, therefore accounting could not invoice it. All right, so let's talk about why we chose three bezels. Uh, obviously, we could have written this within the conf confines of one bezel, but maybe I have individuals that all they do is pick. If you look at, if you've been in any of these large warehouses, uh, they, are, they are from this end to that end, and we employ a pseudo wave pick. If you understand the concept of wave pick that says start at your first location, and it may not be the same uh, uh, line number on the customer order, or a sequential line number, it may be pick line one, pick line 15, et cetera, and then as we walk through that warehouse, we're picking those in a wave uh, manner. So that was one of the things is the individuals that do the picking process don't do the shipping process. So we had to give them that, uh, they wanted that bezel to be uh, specific to the picking process. The individuals that do the uh, pack list creation are not the ones that do the picking. So simplistic, simplistically st uh, stating, we said, all right, we'll have a builder. That's the pack list builder. And so that from there, they, the individuals that are they're taking the physical item, creating the uh, uh, pack list uh, in UPS or whatever. And, uh, and then the last one is the confirmation. And uh, uh, we, we, that could be the same day, could be two or three days from now when they confirmed it. Questions, comments? If none, then I'm gonna go ahead. Question, um, if, we, if you pick, oh. uh, pick parts from the app, mm -hmm. is it possible to print, like a label printer? Yep, yep, yep. 
Yep. File system plugin. Yep. I mean, there's two ways with file system plugin to plug in best. If you have something like Loftware or Bartender, um, that's the that file system plugin, you would write that file and then get like the native Loftware or Bartender. Yeah, yeah. Bartender is what I was looking at. Yeah, so yeah. 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 I mean, you use native print, like Apple Print or whatever, too, but like Loftware is going to be better. Okay. Yeah. Bartender, yeah. If you understand uh, the, the, the concept that Bartender and Loftware are built on, you have a print server, mm -hmm. and so you just output to that print server, and then built, uh, encoded within that uh, LWL or, or uh, B, uh, BWL, or I can't remember what, uh, I think the BWL is their file, file format, is the information of what printer to go to, things like that, the label output. Yes, sir? Um, you mentioned the integration with FedEx and UPS. Was mm -hmm. that using those label tools, or was that? Um, uh, that is, in essence, using the back end of the database, SQL logic. All right, so what we did in that situation there is we actually uh, uh, um, transfer, because both of those platforms are on a, in a SQL environment, we just trigger information out to them and, and then and pull information back in. Also, oh, you yeah. are using some of the programming in Beslio? Uh, not within Beslio proper. Uh, it is, and, and Keith uh, is our uh, uh, integration expert on that. Uh, and if you want to add, uh, if you want to expand on that for a second. So, so all we're all we're simply doing is triggering back and forth, okay. and uh, so therefore, as long as you as, as as part of the integration process, you have to have some placeholder within the database, you know, whatever database you're using, you have to have a placeholder to hold the information, and uh, so then yeah, the intent is to be able to go ahead and let them do their thing. So we pass information over to them, they do their thing, and then as part of that process, they're going to do a tracking number, way bill, or whatever. And then we want that information coming back over there because obviously your customer service people or whomever is looking for this information uh, is not going to be out in the uh, UPS, FedEx, uh, DHL, or, or common carrier uh, software. Right. So we want a uh, customer calls up and says, hey, you know, what's the status of my shipment? Well, here's when it shipped. Here's your tracking number, et cetera. And they just went in and queried that. Common carrier. Would that, would that uh, expand, um, like um, selling it to other companies? Like, like if you supply tools for another, like manufacturing tool. Um, okay. Manufacturing. Uh, Software. Like ERP. Would that integrate, or would, are you talking about? Um, well, a customer portal typically would be where I'm merely looking at things. I'm doing. I'm a, I'm a customer, and I bought something off the XYZ company. Um, and if I, and if the XYZ company gives me a customer portable, a customer portal, I then can go out and query uh, my shipments. Hey, I'm looking for this PO, or I'm looking for whatever this part number, and I don't remember what PO I ordered it on, or whatever. So that would be a customer portal where I'm I'm typically querying. What we're talking about here is within the XYZ company, the shipping process, and as a result of that shipping process, what's, in that, what's available to that customer portal would be, in this case, the tracking number, way bill, or whatever. Now, if you're looking to in, take and, and say, hey, this kind of logic, is it integratable to any software? Typically, if you, if you have triggering and, and things like that, ODVC connectivity, then yes, the, the response would be yes. I'm not sure if I. Uh, not, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad somebody thinks I am. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll, I'll tell my wife that. No. Yes, sir. Um, one of the things that I saw was that it needed a sales order number to mm -hmm. request that list of things to mm -hmm. pick. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to show a list of yep. sales orders? Yep. In this case here, in this case here, they don't want the user. Uh, one of the things we talked about was having the ability to flag something in the database so then we could go out and query that or, some, or, or have some formula or some uh, on the query. How, you know, what's the logic that I need to query and display? And they said, no, they have, a, um, <laughs> they have quite an in-depth process that they go through to when they want to pick something. So uh, they, go, they run this report 
and then they give that uh, uh, one sheet at a time to the pick. The individual's going to go out and do the picking, uh, or individuals, I should say. And so they say, okay, here's what you need to go pick. And And, and you'll see uh, on the labor uh, entry uh, demonstration, you'll see where uh, we, we present a list. In this case here, these are active work orders. In other words, let's assume that they're released work orders, and it's for this, operate, uh, for this resource. And so I can give them a list, and they can scan that or key that, or you know, select it individually. So I'll show that to you in a second. Okay? But yes, the short answer is, yep, in this case here, uh, this customer says, nope, uh, they can't pick from the list. Uh, but they're going to pick. They're going to. And what actually happens is that on this uh, pick list, there's a barcode, and so when they walk up to the, um, let me give you the web uh, uh, portal first here. So do you? Does everybody have a unique login? Yes. And so one is an administrator that designs the bezel. Yep. Um, Yeah, and the reason, the reason you want that, the reason that you want that is that uh, you want to know who picked it as soon as I get my caps lock on here. You want to know who, uh, who picked it, and so uh, you can tie that back to, you know, what did they pick. So in this case here, this is my sales order ID, and uh, so I can go out here, and if everything is working properly, uh, which I think I'm okay, it is. So in this case here, you can see I went out and I scanned or keyed that in. And uh, so here's my, uh, again, uh, I showed you the, uh, the screens there. So I'm now picking this customer order, this line item, uh, this part ID. Here's the required quantity, and here's the location that I'm going for. All right, and so I can go in here and then say, okay, how many do I want? Well, I can go ahead and roll this up here like this. Or roll it down like this, or I can say I want 500, like that. Again, this is nothing more than a demonstration of the bezel that's, uh, that uh, uh, is doing the picking process. And, uh, and then I would go ahead and, and, uh, and flow through there and, and process all this accordingly. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. I know it's going to come back and bite me, but that's okay. So I've picked this. And it says, hey, by the way, this customer order has been completely picked. Now, one of the dilemmas that we, were, we faced with and, and, uh, in this, with this individual customer was um, I didn't finish the picking because it said I needed 1,000. I only put 500 of them in there. And there's two other line items that are on this uh, customer order, line one and line three. Uh, I want to go back in and pick this order. So I'll go back in here. And we'll type in B-E-Z-L-Demo. And it's going to come back here and it's going to say, okay, hey, all right, I know you haven't picked everything, so I'm going to let you go back in here. So one of the dilemmas that they were considering here was, okay, I've already got some picked out here and they are ready to be packed and, you know, for the shipment builder, processed accordingly. And, and what's the ramifications of this? Because in essence, you're going back out here. Not only do I have one entry in the, in, the, in the database showing that I've picked this, now I'm going to put another entry into that database. And so th those were some things that we were, uh, you know, we said, okay, uh, are you going to allow this? 
will you allow uh, multiple entries in there? And in essence, uh, the, the short answer is initially it was no, but then we came back around and said, well, you know, what difference does it really make? But as long as I know that I have these to add to the order, things like that. So I can go ahead and pick my other 500. Well, that depends on if you wanted it to do that. Okay. In this case here, they can overpick. But you could have a variable in there that would prevent them from overpicking. You could say, okay, hey, because maybe, maybe, the, maybe a lot of times uh, um, you, you, uh, manufacturers are, are allowed to have an, a short, an over or an, or an under. In other words, 10% uh, over, you can ship 10% over. So if the order was for 100 and I shipped 200, no, that's not allowable. But if I shipped 110, that would be allowable. So that's sometimes the logic you've got to employ there uh, to make that happen. All right. Okay, so uh, I'm going to st uh, stop with this one right here because, uh, well, let me jump. Let me, let, me, let me jump over to another database here. Uh, I think I can do this without too much effort. Uh, there you're going to be using the Apple uh, iPad Mini. Yeah, yeah. they talked about doing it using the iPod Touch, uh, but they decided because of the amount of information that they, they're displaying and such, uh, they wanted to uh, to uh, change that. Yep. <laughs> That's in, the, that's in the next release, Brian. <laughs> uh, oh, hang on a second. I, I got a problem here with my... Um, okay. Let me give you an example. I think I can do this. SO-97531. Okay. Uh, so let's say I have the iPhone 5. This is an example of the shipment builder. I jumped over to another database here. Uh, notice what it says right here. Part of this sales order has already been shipped, the sales order here. And oh, by the way, do you want to view the pack list, et cetera, et cetera? And if not, and we'll, since my screen is extra large here, I need to slide over here a little bit. All right, do I want to ship additional? I could go in here and say, yep, I do want to ship additional. And when that's the case, uh, because I'm running in a large uh, screen here, let me see if I can slide this back over. I'm probably not going to be able to. We'll do it like this. All right. It's not going to let me do that, so we'll do this. All right, so this is the shipment builder and the process here. So it says, oh, by the way, we're not shipping any more. In other words, uh, we've picked everything, but we want to go ahead and create... Uh, uh, pack lists out of what's already been picked. So these items here would be, if I scroll up to the header up here, these items here would be line number, part ID, and the quantity against this sales order. And so in this case here, I could click this top button, this ch top checkbox right here, and that would grab everything, or I could be selective and go down through here and do them one at a time. And I want to do that one, I want to do this one, this one, and this one. So now what's going to happen here is I'm telling the, the Beslow is telling the system to go ahead and grab this, create a pack list for this item, this item, this item, and this item. Leave the rest of them in, an, in a picked status. So if I was to go over here and build a shipment, and then I would have the ability to go ahead and print, those pack, print that pack list and anything else that's associated. And again, these are just an example of four of them right here that uh, uh, for this customer that uh, they wanted the ability to uh, uh, create output from these pack lists. Are those documents you have there created from Beslio or are you pulling those in from the ERP? In this case here, everything is being pulled in from the ERP. We're going out reading the ERP and, and pulling that information in. It depends on what output. In this case here, they use Crystal Reports. And so we're just uh, uh, running that Crystal Report and pulling that data in and then, and then allowing them to print. Okay. And then if I jump over here to the, and I'm working in, a, uh, in the web portal right now, if I jump over here to the shipment confirmation, 
Here's the example of, do I want to constrain the, our, our filter by the pack list? So if I start typing in three, two, four, four, notice how I'm filtering that down now. And each time as I key in a, 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 the next number here, I'm now looking at just any pack list right now that begins with the 3244. I have the ability to go ahead and notice that uh, part of the, uh, of the process that they wanna ensure is that uh, before that's invoiced, if there's no waybill ID in here, somebody better find a waybill ID and put it in there. And they wanna confirm that those are the dates that the item was shipped. So I could put in a waybill here and say one, two, three, four, and one, two, two, three, four, and and uh, and I can go ahead and say do this and do this, and when I mark those as shipped, I'm going to go ahead and notice I have an output up here that says a confirmation that says this is what happened, and notice this, they cleared the screen. So now in the pack in the database, I've marked those as complete. Plus I've updated the uh, the waybill number. Questions? All right, I'm gonna jump over onto this device and give you an example briefly of the mobile, what we would be looking at here. Same situation, we'll wait for it to wake up here. It may have gone to sleep, there we go. Okay, and notice the nice thing about this. I'm in a portrait mode, and it'll jump back over to portrait. I'm in a landscape mode, and I can scroll down through here. And in this case here, I'm going to go to this uh, labor entry. And uh, we'll load the bezel. In this case, uh, this is a a, a, a field service type of a, a, bezel, a bezel where the, they want to be able to track the time of their installers uh, as they're installing. And so all they want to know is, A, I'm logged in. So I log in. And this, in essence, is the ability to, I'm the individual, I'm on my smartphone here. And as I'm working along here, we'll stay in the landscape mode here. As I'm working along here, well, don't give me grief. As I'm working along here, uh, it's knowing what I, who I am, what I'm doing, and uh, what my, what the history has been. And All right, so that's right. Uh, we can go ahead and query to say, okay, hey, who is, whose phone is this? Who's the individual? We'll log them in, and we can go ahead and do a start. Uh, we can just jump over here to indirect. So we go ahead and bring up uh, the indirect functionality, and we can say, okay, uh, it's a miscellaneous indirect. Maybe they're uh, cleaning up, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over into a mode like this so you can see it a little better. So right now, we've got some information logged in since whatever, whatever, and this is the current activity. So they're done, they're ready to, you know, they've got the, the, they've prepped or whatever, they're ready to move on. I'm gonna go ahead and start a run. Now, to give you an example, uh, see right, see this barcode right here? That's on my screen. So I'm going to scan. I can key this or I can scan this. So I'll get over here a little closer and I'm gonna scan this. And yes, and if it does that right, come on. I probably should use my phone because I know it, I've not tested it on this particular bezel here, but there it goes. 
Okay, notice I scanned it off of, my, off of a screen here. I didn't have paper, I scanned it right off of the screen, so if somebody had a question about scanning and, and such, uh, I was able to do it that way. But also remember, before I'm on that same screen here, I'll jump back here, but on the same screen I said you can either scan it or you can select it. And so there was your grid of, of open work orders type of a situation or sales orders or whatever. So I'm in a current activity of run, so I'm moving along here and I get done with this particular job. I'm done. I simply end that session. Now what am I going to do? I can move on to the next job or I can log out. There's another example. This just happens to be a simplified labor, labor, labor entry bezel. Questions? Um, I'm going to ask, instead of asking a client employee to use his own iPhone or something like that, what's out there instead of yeah. doing that? Um, you know, for most people, like, I think the cheapest option is buying uh, ruggedized and Android devices. Is usually the cheapest way to deploy things. Um, a lot of the makers have very nice, like kind of like that, what they call like a tab tablet or whatever, like that mix between a phone and tablet size is usually pretty good. And then you can slap a light proof case on it, and it's usually pretty good to go. Um, if you want something, if you were doing a lot of like very fast transactions, um, maybe with barcode reading, Zebra makes several models of like ruggedized Android devices with a built-in barcode scanner onto it, and best of works by the ones too. Um, so, you know, usually we talk to people about like what the environment's gonna be like, like how much and how fast they're gonna be scanning and things like that to really try to pick the right, uh, help them pick the right hardware. But thankfully like those, you know, the one thing I would look at is like the Zebra devices are usually about $1,200 each, um, which is pretty far for that course. Versus you can buy those rugged ID Android devices for like 200 bucks. So for most people you can get away with that. If you do have high high scanning needs, then you typically start fading in more of the Zebra devices. Keep, keep in mind, uh, you know, we're looking at uh, a mobile versus a web portal. So you may be out in your production, uh, you have uh, a couple of workstations uh, throughout the uh, environment. And so uh, you, you connect through, uh, you go run Bezio through those and, and connect that way. So I think I got this, but the libraries for scanning are uh, are already included in the mobile app. Um, yeah, camera scanning yeah. is one line of code. Oh, no. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. And if you wanted to use like any kind of uh, like physical barcode scanner, usually there's a keyboard wedge so that they work fine. Okay, so the Braille ones will work with physical barcodes? What's up? <laughs> yes. And then, like, if another thing to think about with, with regards to that, you know, the, like the camera scanner is nice, especially on a more modern device, you can have a better quality camera. They should pick up pretty darn well nowadays. The nice thing about it is they can be very contextually aware of what you're scanning. You could have like five buttons on the screen, and you kind of button pull up the scanner, and it knows you're scanning for that one thing as opposed to anything else. Whereas if it's a, if you're using a keyboard wedge based scanner, you do need to be mindful of uh, you know, limiting what the cursor can be sitting in at any point in time by having just the sales order field open because the scan is going to type in that field physically. You know, one of the things, sorry, I'm going to go One of the things that we've been challenging people to do is like to think, to try to think beyond. You know, when we talk about hardware devices and stuff like that, is don't just rely on the base doing it, but like, think about the market like, the problem and see if there's better ways of doing it. We were talking to a customer about like, you know, instead of putting the warehouse ID in, is reading the GPS coordinates and picking the warehouse from there. You know, because you already know where it's at. Right. We were talking to one customer at the F50, I think it's not a usage group, and they have like a giant outdoor picking area, and they're like, well, how are we going to figure out where to send people? I said, all right, we're going to write one bezel, we have them walk in each bin, they type the bin number in, and they click the point, and then it drops the pin location, the geocodes it for us. And then, like, you've already geocoded your entire, like, you know, your entire picking area with that one. You know, there's, you've got to think about how you can use the hardware as well. You know, that is a way to, like, minimize the number of, inter inter like, of points you have to enter, and then, 
assume as much as you possibly can based on the physical. And I think our innovation of real barcodes is going to go a long way. It's going to take <laughs> it. Brian, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the best there, sir. It's <laughs> yes, sir. That barcode scanner, was that, did it open, did Wesley open an app or did it have its own barcode scanner built in? You said it was one line, I can't remember. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's built directly into it. There's right. like a helper function that calls everything up and just returns you whatever value is scanned in it. So it calls up a barcode in the app application on the device itself? Uh, it, it's still inside of the Wesley app. It calls that screen up. And then returns from the screen with the data that you selected. Yeah, that was actually uh, this is a pretty recent addition. This is like in the realm that I talked earlier about about like you learn things that are already in the platform you may not know. This is something that we've added relatively recently, and uh, it's been a pretty big hit for people because a lot of times you just want a casual barcode scan. You don't need something super high volume or anything like that. I mean, you know, the one that I think about is like being able to scan a job traveler and see what like the current steps are. You know, it's like I'm not doing a lot of them. So just having it in my app in my hands would be a really big help for me to be able to scan and see what operations have been completed or something like that. There's gonna be a presentation tomorrow that will show you how to use it. Yeah, so you'll see it done and you'll see how it works. Yeah, I mean like this is something that I had written in a, an app that I probably could have done in Bezlio. Some delimiter. We basically use some kind of a splitting character. But yeah, absolutely. The nice thing about like 2D barcodes is that you can scan it all in one and without having to worry about barcodes it's that long. I mean, right. I'm sure that people remember who have done barcode scanning. The code 39 days, when it's like the barcode basically went across the entire page and you saw people doing mm -hmm. one of these to check that the whole scan in at once. I think um, your 2D would be where you want to have like a lot of information in there. You might want to have like not only all the job information, but maybe some details about customer or something like that. I think a tremendous amount of information to pull up. You probably could buy a pretty simple barcode to get when you're done on the job center operation. Um, you know, just using delimiters. And then Bezley, when it receives it back as part of that one function, yeah. you know, you get this one screen, you can do whatever you want with it at that point. You say like, okay, split it on the periods, the first segment for the job, second period is the same thing. Don't know how many even some of it is, especially for developers here, is that can a 2D instead of the O39 because just you're more current. Yeah. I mean, it's just saying we can do 2D codes and just drop it in. It's the same amount of codes. Why do we still scan the part ID and then the lock or the serial? Yeah. Like, there's no reason for it. You know, you should just scan it all at once. 
Mm -hmm. so, so this is the, the example that I, you know, I chose scan up here, but I could go ahead and move down here and say, well, I'm going to do that one right there. So that's the list that you were asking about earlier. Is, you know, so yes, the, you, know, you can build a list, you can scan, or you can have the option thereof. Yes, sir. I have a question. So when we go to, let's say, clock off of a job, does it automatically recognize that I'm already clocked in, or do I have to tell it that I'm clocking in versus clocking out? Well, in this case, in this particular bezel here, we, we, this little orange button or red button here, I'm colorblind. Uh, you go ahead and choose that. You, you physically clock off. But, yeah, you can write the bezel. You can write the bezel however you want it to be. Okay. So, yep. no, actually, I see what you're saying. Yep. That, that it's sort of like that record button. Yep, yep. Hey, yep. Yep. You're not recording time. Yep. Yep. And you can you can let do you can, you can accrue lag time however you want. In other words, lag time being in between jobs. Other questions? We've got a couple minutes yet. 
Yeah. All right, excellent. So that's the end of this session. Enjoy.